this morning is let God be glorified through you. Let God be glorified through you. Or we can personalize it and say, let God or may God be glorified through me. Can I hear you say that, please? Last Sunday, if you can still remember, was the baptism of the Lord, and it was the end or conclusion of our Christmas festivity or season. And it was the baptism of the Lord, I mean Monday rather, anyway. Epiphany was Sunday, and Monday was the baptism of the Lord. But the baptism of the Lord also reminds us of our own baptism, of our own baptism. But today's readings speak of the effect of that baptism. We are not baptized to be dormant. We are not baptized to be irrelevant or inactive. We are baptized that we may be plunged into action. That is why God gives us the spirit. John says in today's gospel that he who is coming will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and power. So our baptism makes us children of God, and as children of God, we are active people. We are not frozen people. We are not dead people. By the virtue of your baptism, you become or you come alive. You come alive. You become active. You become a Christian. A Christian is a synonym to being alive, to being active. So it is an error to be a Christian and you are frozen and you are inactive and you don't do anything and you are baptized. So that is what the baptism pushes us, pushes us to the world to act. For who? For God. So that is why we entitle this reflection, Let God be glorified through me. In the first reading today from the book of Isaiah, the Lord said to me, the Lord said to me, you are my servant. You are my servant. So you are God's worker. You are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. So where you see Israel, you put your name. You are my servant, Peter, in whom I will be glorified. The same thing applies to you. In whom I will be glorified. Now, the question is, through my lifestyle and through your lifestyle, is God being glorified? You need to ask yourself, and I need to ask myself this question. Am I bringing glory to God? Am I bringing glory to God through my lifestyle? Am I bringing glory to the church, the Catholic church? Am I bringing glory to my family? Whatever we do have a ripple effect. It does not only affect us. And that was why when Jesus healed the man that was blind, he said to him, go and show yourself, or the, the, the man that is, was suffering from a lep- leprosy, he said, go and show yourself to the priest. Because that sickness affects the community. What we do, the life we live, affect others in one way or the other. 
It may be your family. It may be the church. It may be the image of God that your lifestyle affects. So God is saying today, let your lifestyle, let your job, the work you do, what you say, where you go, let them bring glory to me. Let them bring glory to me. And in the same first reading, the last um, line of the first reading, God says to us, I will give you, I want you to pay attention to the words, I will give you as a light to the nations. I will give you as a light. You will be a present, a gift to the world. And I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. So we have work to do. We have work to do. God is giving us, wherever you are, you are a gift of God in that place, in that environment, in that time. Wherever you find yourself, in the bus, on the street, in the neighborhood, in your working place, in your school, in the church, in the market, wherever, God is saying, I have given you as a light to the nations, to the nations, to people around you. So that through you, my blessing, my salvation will reach to the end of the earth. We ask ourselves another question. Am I living a life? That is leading others to God. Am I living a light of light or darkness? Am I darkening the image of God? Am I making God less visible to humanity, to people? Through my character, through my attitude, through my behavior. Am I a revelation? Am I a revelation? When people see me, are they seeing God? Are they understanding the truth, the justice? So your life should not be a darkness or a block to others from seeing God. Sometimes this is the case. That I use my attitude, my behavior to block people from reaching God. To turn people away from God. We are still at the beginning of the year. So it is a time that we examine ourselves. Socrates says, an unexamined life is not worth living. If you cannot look into your life. And ask yourself, am I getting better or am I getting worse? Am I making progress? Am I being changed, transformed as a Christian, as a believer? Or am I stagnant? So we must not be blocked. We must not be idols. Blocking people from experiencing God. Rather, we should be like John the Baptist today. He pointed Jesus to people. He said, behold the Lamb of God. Can you do the same? Am I doing the same? St. Paul today also speaks about his own vocation. He speaks about his own vocation. He said, Paul called by the will of God. Paul called by the will of God. 
So it was God who called him. And we know that Paul was living a wayward life. He was living life against Christ. He was an antichrist. He was not living as an ambassador of Christ, but he was living as an ambassador of idol, of his laws and customs. Are you living as an ambassador of your own attitude, of your own laws and traditions that prevent you from having a good relationship with people? He said, I, Paul, an ambassador of Christ. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20, Paul says, We are ambassadors for Christ as though God were making his appeal through us. We are ambassadors of Christ as though God is making his appeal through us. My dear brothers and sisters, we are the Christ that people experience we are the Jesus that people see today. Christianity is a vocation. Once you say, I am a Christian, it is a vocation. It is a call to be another Christ. If you remember in Acts of Apostles, um, chapter 11, I think verse 25 and 26, we are told that it was at Antioch that the believers we are first called Christians. Why? Because people saw the way they were living their lives and said, these people are identical to Christ. These people are identical to Christ because of the way of their life, lives. So Christianity is a vocation. It is a call to be another Christ. In the world, in our respective vocation, in the vocation of being Christians, we also answer a call for special vocations. For example, priesthood, religious life, married life, your, um, your job, either a medical doctor, a banker, a teacher, is a vocation within the vocation of being a Christian. And the part cannot be bigger than the whole. Don't forget that the whole is our vocation as Christians. So, that you are a priest, you are a medical doctor, you are a married man or woman, you must be guided by the principles of Christianity. You are a medical doctor as a Christian. So you answer that call within the general call of Christianity. So we are called in different vocations. And this is what we should ask ourselves. That God has blessed us. We are baptized Christians. And then we are now a medical doctor. Am I practicing my profession as a Christian? I am a married man. Am I living as a Christian? Am I, am, I am a married woman. Am I, am I living as a Christian? I am a teacher. Am I living as a Christian? Teaching as a Christian. What guides me? What are my principles? The principle we have is the doctrines of the church and the word of God. These are the things. So we need to ask ourselves, all what we are doing, are we guided by the teachings of the church or are we also guided by the word of God? Next Sunday is the Sunday of the word of God. This is actually the reason why Pope Francis instituted this period, that we should reflect, that we should reflect on the word of God. The word of God should be our principle, should be our mirror, should be our guide. And these are the things we are looking at today. Each one of us looking to his or her own life. Paul, in the second reading, answered this call. He was formerly in darkness. He was formerly in darkness. 
But today he speaks about a new vocation. He speaks about his new vocation. A vocation of encountering Christ. A vocation that changes everything about him. Everything about Paul was transformed and it changed. And Paul says, I no longer live. It is Christ that lives now in me. It's no longer I that lives. It's no longer me that walks. It is Christ that is living in me, that is walking in me. That is his vocation. He answered that call. He was formerly a bad person, lived in darkness. And in order to let him know that he was in darkness, you know that experience on his way to Damascus, when that light hit him, he fell down and he was blind. Because he was already blind. Many of us are Christians, but we are blind. We are not talking about physical sight. They interviewed one blind man. And he said that the worst blindness is lack of vision. Spiritual blindness. And Hosea 4 says, my people are perishing because they lack wisdom. It's not about the sight. Um, was it yesterday? Kenya, the, 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 the diocese of uh, Nyeri in Nairobi ordained for the first time a blind priest. A blind person is a priest. You see it is on the social media. I think just yesterday the, the diocese of Nyeri in Kenya. So we are not talking about the sight. He may be physically blind but that priest is spiritually okay. Sight he could see. This is the sight I'm talking about. And when Paul encountered Christ, everything changed in his life. And he says, I, Paul, called by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ. I am no longer apostle of the Jew. I'm no longer apostle of the law. I'm no longer apostle of the prostitution. I'm no longer apostle of lying. I'm no longer apostle of fornication, adultery. I'm no longer apostle of cheat and gossip. Whose apostle are you today? Whose apostle are you today? To be an apostle is to be sent. Who is sending you? And you are sent, we know who is sending you by your action. We know who is sending you by your action. You know, there's a way somebody will talk to you and say, ah, who send you? We they use them talk. We say, who send you? Yes, because of what that person is doing. You say, who send you? So, you are an apostle of who is sending you. And we know who is sending you by your action. And Jesus said, by their fruit, we shall know them. So Paul became an apostle of Christ. A Christian is a channel of God's blessings. God uses us to touch lives. God uses each one of us. And we ask ourselves today, is God using me to touch life? Am I a blessing to this generation? Am I a blessing to the church where I worship? to the family where I live, to the office where I work, or am I a burden? Am I a burden? Are people tired of you because of your attitude, your character, your behavior, your words? Or are you a blessing leading others to Christ? We must decrease so that Christ will increase in us. This was the quotation of John the Baptist that we read in the gospel today. We have to quit being egocentric to being Christocentric. To be egocentric is to present yourself, to say, I, I, me. Everything is about you, your own comfort. You don't think about other people. It doesn't matter what 
will be the effect as far as, as long as I am okay, everybody can go to hell. That is egocentricism. And it is not a Christian life. So we must make a shift from egocentric to Christocentric. When you are Christocentric, you are saying that Christ is the center of my life. And people will see it in the things you do, in the things you say. You can actually go far this year with humility by being Christocentric. We can actually achieve a lot this year by becoming more humble. If humility becomes your bedrock, you can actually go far this year. Some of our attitudes show that we have not experienced Christ. Some of our behavior is showing that we are Christians, but without Christ. You can be a Christian without Christ. Our behavior show this. And we are still at the, at the beginning of the year. We can become better. If Paul can be changed from Saul to Paul, nobody is beyond redeemable. Nobody is beyond transformation. God can see changes. It doesn't matter your lifestyle. It doesn't matter your behavior, your attitude. What matters is that you have allowed Jesus in your life to become Christocentric in your life. That is what matters. But if we have not experienced him, we have not encountered him, it will be difficult to present him. And that is why John, in this, today's gospel, concludes by saying, I have seen. The first thing he said is, I have seen. Before he says, I bore witness. Many of us are bearing witness without seeing. And it is dangerous. It is false Christianity. First of all, you have to experience him. You have to encounter him before we can relate him to others. And that is what John says, and I have seen him and have borne witness that this is the Son of God. Can we do the same? Can we experience him and point him every day, every month, every week, every hour, in every place we are, and say, this is the Son of God. Father, let your will be done. Let your will be done. Because I'm just a piece of clay. Father, and you are the porter. Father, let your will be done. Let your will be done. Because I'm just a piece of clay. Father, and you are the porter. The song is saying that we are clay and God is the potter. We're asking that his will be done in our lives. That God should remold us into his vessels. The useful vessel. The vessel that others can use and reach God. Amen.